Hello and welcome back to WA Real. I'm your host, Bryn Edwards. WA Real brings you real and authentic stories from fascinating people here in Western Australia. Stories to inspire and guide you to take action to be all you can be. Many want to find that balance between running our own business, achieving our goals and having a meaningful personal life away from work. And that's what I'll be talking about with today's guest, Barry Magliaditi. Originally born in San Diego, Barry lived in Tasmania before moving to WA six, eight years ago. Barry is a peak performance coach focusing on facilitating sustainable heart-based changes that affect all aspects of life in a positive way. Barry is the founder and director of The Game Changers and has been recognised for his thought leadership by the 30 Under 30 Telstra Business Awards in 2015 and was also chosen as Australian Coach of the Year for the 2016 Invia Innovation and Excellence Business Coaching in Australia. Barry, welcome to the show. Thanks very much for having me. Cool. So, obviously you started off in San Diego and then Tasmania and then WA. Tell us a quick bit about that journey because one of the things I'm always keen about is not everybody was born in WA, quite a lot of people come here. Yeah. What was your journey? to come to WA and why was that? So, so quick backstory. So mum and dad's, uh, or dad's parents were Italian mafia, so Sicilian mafia. Brilliant. That migrated to the States. Uh, dad was in the Marine Corps in America and then a cop for, for highway patrolman for many years. Uh, me and my older brother were born. They decided that America was not the best place to bring us up at that point in time. Yeah. And uh, Dad originally met Mum uh, while on a, a military ship docked in Hobart in Tasmania, which is where Mum was from. So they made the decision shortly after I was born to to migrate back to back to Tasmania because that was the the, the, the safer place to, to be bringing my, 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 myself and my older brother up. Uh, Dad never chose to go to that, that mafia route but uh <laughs> you, you never you never quite know so uh they moved back to hobart to, to be closer to mum's family uh and and yeah spent god i don't know like 20 25 years of my life 26 years of my life in tasmania uh experienced some uh, or just say some adversity some challenges when uh one of my first businesses that i that i started from scratch went bankrupt for 1.3 million yeah i was and, gonna ask uh, you about this in a minute yeah, so, so long story short, we can dive back down into it. I had a, I met a woman, uh, we had a couple of accidental kids, uh, which at the time were very stressful, but the best thing that ever happened to me, uh, who's from WA, and basically she decided one day to leave me because uh, I was never there, and when I was there, I was not present, I was very angry, so she decided to <laughs> take the kids and, and come back to WA, which is where her family were from, to get some support, uh, up and left me, and I kind of did the whole catch you later thing you don't know, support me and I'm doing this for you guys and then a few weeks later I thought what the hell am I what the hell am I doing so I spent the next six months kind of winding my business up uh, before transitioning to WA about eight years ago now right and that was the start of uh, a very phenomenal journey ever since mm. do you enjoy it here yeah yeah look um Number one, the weather. You can't really go past the weather in WA. The beaches, like you can see here, we're sitting right next to the, the beach here in Palm Beach. Uh, absolutely love the beaches. It's a good place. I go to travel a lot. I spend 30% of my time in WA, 30% in Melbourne, and the rest of the time overseas. Um, so I do travel a lot, but it's a really nice place to come home to. You know, it's, mm. as I said, the, the weather, the beaches are beautiful, the people are great here, and um, there's plenty of things to do. Yeah. So you've made um, coaching, you know, what you do and your business. Um, so coaching is very much around uh, supporting and developing and helping others to you know, get the most out of themselves. Where does that come from within you, that drive? Yeah, so first of all, I'd probably say it's more around, um, more around challenging others' thinking because I think that often in life like we're being influenced every second of every day you know like yeah. from the, the tv and the way that that shows up to put us into a hypnotic trance to you know the marketing to the to product placements on like we're all the time being influenced and that's not even to mention the upbringing and the stuff that we've taken on board from our from our parents and from our grandparents and from the from society right and i think it's more so than i think generally people have support in life through one way or another now whether it's the support that they want or that they need is another story but I think the coaching and the space that you operate in is more so really challenging people's thinking and challenging the way that they're, that they're choosing to show up in life. And what I mean by choosing is a lot of people are unconsciously choosing the life that they have. Yes. Right? I, I honestly believe, and, and from, from I've yet to be proven wrong with, with clients we work with, is that 
Um, no matter what you have in life right now, the experience is that you've chosen that. Now, I'm not saying that what you're dealing with right now, what you're having is what you want, but in some way, shape or form, you've chosen the life that you're living. Everybody has, like we're the creator of our own destiny, like we're either at cause or at effect for life. And what we help people do is to start to consciously create their future. We help them start to consciously choose the life that they want to live through allowing them to really like unshackle themselves from those limiting beliefs and those experiences of life and and start to really wake up and and you know challenge them to to see life as life is not as they are yes because we don't ever see life as life is we see life as as we are and through the the filters and the lenses of our experience and through our own belief systems and our sensory experiences we're not seeing life as life is you know, if you've had a bad experience with a woman where, you know, she's cheated on you, divorced you, whatever the case may be, you're going to develop some sort of belief around what that means. Now, if that happens to you three or four or five times in a row, you're going to start to believe in some pretty negative things about women, right? Now, you might meet this woman who's the absolute woman in dreams, nicest woman in the world who's never done anything like that before. You're going to automatically start to assume those things about her based on your past experience. But the yeah. fact is, is that's not life. That's your assumption or that's your experience of life. And so we really help people to, to, to remove all of that. And I suppose you said, like, where do I find that? Well, you know, I went through this bankruptcy period. I, I, I started off a business. I grew it to, to multiple million, millions of dollars in a very short period of time with no previous business experience. And that was all started because... Young, then, right? Yeah. I had a boss that, that um, abused me one day and told me I'd never amount to anything. And that was kind of the theme of my life. That's what I kind of experienced throughout high school, primary school and high school that I would never amount to anything, that I was not worth anything, that, that no one liked me, I didn't fit in. And I just felt in my heart, I just had this awakening that I had to leave. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I had a mortgage at the time, I had bills, I had no money in the bank, but I just felt I needed to leave this guy. And I ended up, you know, three weeks later, opening up my own kitchen and bathroom renovation business, grew it to multiple millions in four years time. Um, and then my whole life went to shit, pretty much. You know, I, I'd met this woman, which was earlier than what I expected it to be. We had a couple of, of kids during multiple forms of contraception and life was really showing up for me, not against me. I just yes. wasn't able to see to that to put in time. You know, mm. I believe that life always gives us what we need, not what we want. Yes. And, um, I like that. you know, long story short, things were tough, things were challenging and she said, I'm, I'm out, I, I can't do this anymore. Um, I'm taking the kids, I'm going to WA to, to be with my family, get some support. And, I was kind of like, see you later, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for you. I, I went into business because I didn't want to have the experience I had growing up, which was that my dad was always working. Like beautiful family, always supported, but dad was always working, I never met him. Mm. And I went into my own business to, to go, okay, the only way I can have a life that I can be there for my kids is have my own business and not work for the man that, that he was doing. But yet I created the exact same experience on yeah, steroids. Say, yeah. The exact same experience on, on steroids. steroids. You know, I was even less there for my kids. I was even less present for my kids, more angry, um, and she outed me and I felt betrayed that I was doing this for her. And what I didn't realize at the time is that, that everything that I felt, she felt, she felt betrayed. She felt that I wasn't there for her. She didn't care how much money I had. She just cared that I was there for her and the kids. And that's essentially what brought me to WA. But also what started the journey for me in coaching is that, you know, I realized that I'd, I'd built a life for myself where I was very limited on choices. Like when it comes to, to the cut and it's like, I'm out of here. I had to choose between my business or her because I wasn't in a position that I could have both. Mm. And that, that decision became so hard and so pressing that I started to actually consider suicide because to me, like, like leaving this earth was an easier option than to let go of a business that I'd spent at that point six or seven years of my life creating from nothing that I, I had so much worth and identity about what I created for me and for, yeah. for, for myself. It's interesting, the identity. But. Yeah, massive identity. But the other side, I had this this partner who just loved me, you know, and these kids that just loved me. And like, I never thought I'd be the man to, to, to settle down or have kids. But at that point in time, I was like, I realized how much that actually meant to me. And I'm like, shit, both of these, like, I can't choose. I felt so conflicted in myself that I'm like, I'll just take myself out of this and then I, have to, I don't have to choose, which looking back was massively selfish, right? Yeah. And I made the, the most selfish decision I'd ever made in my life and that was to, to basically foreclose after six months of trying to find ways to, to have both, um, to foreclose, move to WA and, and attempt to rebuild a relationship with her, which meant that you know, my staff suffered, my clients suffered, my, my family, my reputation suffered, all my, 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 my friends' networks, but I felt like that was the first time in my life I made a decision for me. And it was months later that I started coaching and I went, you know, I want to help people live 
Like I went on a mission to search why, like how could I fuck my life up so bad? <laughs> you know, that was the thing. I was like, how could I screw my life up that bad? And I went on a mission to find that. And when I started to realize that it was just me, like like no one else was to blame but me. I was I, I was the one that created that. I went, well, how can I help other people not make that same mistake? Yeah. You know, and that was what really started the, the journey of coaching some seven and a half years ago now, I suppose. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. What was it about wanting to share that journey? Because you could easily have... have come here and started doing you know taking what you'd learned there and do something similar here well I actually did so All right. <laughs> so when I came over here I, I, I basically packed up everything in WA and I uh, in Tasmania and, and drove over here with my dog and my ute and I had a jet ski at the time and that was all the possessions I had because everything else was sold to kind of put back into the business and the clients and try to settle everything um, yeah, a lot of it was that we just borrowed a heap of money to invest in machinery and, and we were in a position that we couldn't just shut the doors Although the business was profitable, we had a massive debt that we couldn't fulfill mm. on. Um, but, you know, packing up, coming over here a thousand bucks to my name and, you know, trying to rebuild things, I was like, I just need a stable job. You know, I just need, I was just so shattered and so beaten and so bruised and I was getting death threats and all sorts of crazy shit was happening. I just needed a job. So I got a job in sales, uh, selling products into the kitchen industry, um, which was pretty awesome. Had freedom to real, nailed that. And a few months later, I was like, naturally me being me I wanted more and so I was like oh, I'm just going to start up another kitchen company again Yeah, and I started up a company but this time I didn't hire any staff um, for a while I didn't have any machinery I just set up a company that was basically sales and marketing I would sell the kitchens and have another company fulfill and it was great yet a few months later I was actually it was my first trip back to Tasmania since I'd left a few months later and I woke up one morning uh, at a bed in my mum's place and I was like I'm dying inside you know, right. like this is not what I've been put on the earth to do with my life. Like I'm, I'm someone that can influence, you know, and although I didn't know that at that time, I think that's what was going on is that I'm like, I'm dying. I, I, I need to be offering more, serving more, giving more than what I am right now. And, you know, I jumped on a plane back to WA and I, I don't know, like I started looking at, I don't even know how I looked up coaching or something and came across Tony Robbins and, yeah, you know, basically bought every product that he had and got his product and, uh, listened to the first CD and I think a track in, I was like, that's what I want to do in my life. I want to be a coach. I want to empower people and inspire people to live a life of fulfillment and live a life that's beyond their wildest dreams. And hmm. at that stage, it wasn't business owners. It was, I would just coach anyone and anything because I've got a message and I've got something to serve. And yeah, I attracted a lot of clients that had sexual abuse issues, that had depression issues, anxiety issues. They just started showing up everywhere. Hmm. And because I was still carrying a lot of emotional stuff um, around the finances, I made a commitment that I wouldn't transition into coaching until um, I'd kind of replaced my wage and then some. And so sure enough, that happened. I left my sales job and then the kitchen business was I kind of this idea of still keeping it growing and having it work without me, but that was a bit of an epic fail again. And so I sold off most of that and uh, jumped into coaching and, and just started serving people, just coaching anyone and everything that I could that I could find because I felt that, you know, People just don't have access to this. It's like mm. we grow up and, and I think many people believe that the life that they're living right now is all that's available because that's all that they've experienced. That's that's all they've seen. You know, there's an interesting quote one of my mentors shared is that the experiences that we learn to survive become the experiences that our continued survival depends upon. Yeah. You know, you start researching like the, the creature neurology, the critter brain, the lizard brain. You know, we are creatures of habits and yes. to that part of our brain, it has two core instincts. You know, one is, is, is reproduction, the second is survival. And so if we've survived an experience growing up where our parents were poor their whole lives or our parents were rich their whole lives or, you know, you know broken marriages or separation or abuse, whatever it is, if we've survived those experiences, as far as that part of our, our brain is concerned, which is actually controlling a lot of our instinct and a lot of how we're, we're showing up in life, as, part, as far as that part of the brain is concerned, that's a survival experience. And so therefore, we naturally go and seek that experience. Yes. And this is how a lot of people get stuck. They get stuck financially, earning a certain amount of money. They get stuck in their relationships. They get stuck in a job they don't enjoy or a business that's not growing. Like That's how they get stuck because the experience they're having in some way, shape or form represents the experience they've always had. And that's what we help people do. We help people break through that so they can have an experience far beyond what's been available to them in the past. Mm. So... For those people who have not experienced coaching, mm. you know, and probably only ever really sort of associated with like sports coaching or something like that, yeah. what would what would I what would I experience if I came to see you? Yeah, because there's some great stuff you talked about. But how does that then translate into 
or what am I actually going to do? Yeah, yeah, it's, that's a really great question. And I suppose it's not too too different to sports coaching. You know, sports coaching is they, they watch the game, they record the game and they review how the game's being played and then offer up suggestions and tweaks around how to do things differently. Mm. And so there's one aspect of that and there's many different forms of coaching out there. And, you know, I think unfortunately it's, it's one of those industries that started to boom a few years ago and anyone mm. that had done a a $27 online NLP training course is now calling themselves a coach, which is a little bit alarming because they don't really know what they're doing and they're messing around with people's thought patterns and their minds and their neuro pathways. And, you know, I, I'm sure they believe they're doing the right thing, but unfortunately, um, you know, it, it can mess you up. Mm-hmm. But, you know, essentially, first and foremost is to find out, well, what would you like? If there's no limitations on your life right now, if there's no limitations on your finances or your current relationship or anything else, like what would you want for life? And, you know, that's often a question people can't answer. So that's where the coaching starts is to Mm. to articulate that because I've never met someone that hasn't known. And what I mean by that is a lot of people say, I don't know what I want to do. But the reason they don't know is because they're they're so stuck in their thinking and their past patterning of how they've been brought up. And the moment we start to unlock that, and remove that within their heart they know what they want to do everyone knows what they want to do there's just some aspect of them blocking that and so that's the first place we start is unblocking that once we're then clear of where people want to go and what they want to achieve with their life we then get get really real with where they're at right now and this is a step that i I see a lot of coaches miss is being present with actually what's showing up yeah because what's showing up in life right now for you gives you a lot of insight and a lot of information into like the actual patterning that's happening and what's yes. been happening in your life to bring you to this point in time. And once we understand that, we can then start to go back in and reprogram that patterning. And, and you know, we have a number of different, pro- <coughs> we have a number of different processes that, that allow us to kind of very quickly, like within a few minutes, go back in and, and find where those biggest blocks are to understanding where, where someone wants to go. And I suppose... A way to look at it is if you look at those old school maps, right, of the atlases in the car. Yeah. Like, if you only knew where you were going, would you be able to get there? Right? You wouldn't. You need to have some reference of where you're starting from. Yeah. Right? And it's the same thing too. If you knew where you're starting from but didn't know where you were going, you're not going to get there either. Yeah. You're going to experience some form of journey, but are you going to get there? And that's why I say a lot of people miss out on that step is that as equally as important is to set goals, you need to actually first understand where you're starting from because once you understand where you're going, where you're starting from, you can then start to create the path to get there. And anything that is that is blocking you internally, what we would refer to as it within the inner game, will yeah. show up. Or anything that's blocking you externally within the outer game will show up. And that's where I suppose we find the real sweet spot is we help people to master the inner game so they can dominate the outer game. Yeah. And a lot of people, it's like they'll go and coach you know, business and they'll give people a whole bunch of marketing or sales strategies and wonder why... They're not pulling the trigger. They're just not pulling the trigger or they're not producing the results. And, you know, we could go really woo here if you wanted to, but I think energetically, life shows up the way that we show up. Yes. We had this really weird situation which might seem a bit unfathomable for some of the listeners out there, but we had a guy who was actually my, my personal trainer. And he's like, oh, Barry, you know, I've been running these, these campaigns on Facebook for two weeks and haven't seen any leads come in. And I was like, what's going on? He's like, oh, this business coach that I'm working with, I went and sat down with him and he said I should be focusing on this niche. He's like, but to be honest, this doesn't feel right, doesn't fit well with me, it's not what I'm passionate about, blah, blah. I was like, well, why are you doing it then? He's like, well, because I've hired him to be an expert. He's told me that's what I should be doing. And so we just had a very lighthearted, basic conversation around what inspires him, what lights, lights him up. And I was like, he helped him get really present with what that was. Yeah. And like... I swear to God, as, as true as us, we're sitting here right now, 24 hours later, he rang me up. He said, you won't believe it. I've got leads coming in. Now, anyone that's ever marketed on Facebook knows that if a campaign is not producing results in two weeks, it's not going to produce results. It doesn't just switch on overnight. And I don't mean one lead. Like he had 12, 15, 16 leads turn up 24 hours later. He didn't change anything. anything. Hadn't touched anything to do with the platform. The only thing that he could put it down to, and, and myself as well, is that he made a shift inside of himself and he was clear on who wanted to go out and serve. Yes. And I, I, I could give you 100, 200 stories like this where we've worked with someone internally and things have just shown up for them. Yeah. Just shown up. Synchronicities start occurring because you take those energetic blocks away and yeah. now you are broadcasting to the universe yeah. your, your signal very clearly. Yeah. And, and, and it's a really good point you, you raise. It's like, imagine a radio station right now. If, if, these, if these guys that are listening were not tuned into the right station, 
they'd either be getting part of the message, you know, um, some of the message or none of the message. Yeah. And it's the same with life is that, you know, we are energetic beings and we've been tuned over our life. And therefore, you know, we've been tuned to experience the way that life is showing up for us right now. Yeah. And so in order for life to show up differently, we need to have a calibration internally that allows us to be more in tune with the station we want to listen to. Is that Triple J? You know, is that some other radio station? Whatever it is. Mm. So there's an internal tune up or that inner game we spoke about. But then there's also understanding, well, what do I need to do externally to then create that? You know, that book, The Secret, one fundamental flaw they had is they talked all about manifestation, but they missed the one core step, which is we needed to take action towards it. Yes. Is understanding, first of all, you know, getting that clarity and, and, and clearing things up internally, but then, well, what do I need to now do that sees me to start to move towards that? Because if you want to be a multi-cash millionaire, right, and, and you work internally to believe that you can be, and, and there's nothing internally blocking you, but yet you keep spending every single cent that you've got, doesn't matter how much money you attract, you could attract billions of dollars. You, you just keep spending it. You're never going to achieve your goal of being a cash millionaire. Yes. So there's the internal work that allows that attraction or the opportunities to show up, but then there's the external strategy, which allows that, that to then consistently grow. Yeah. And you need both. And you can't have one without the other. And if you do, that's how life shows up pretty shitty for you. You're taking a lot of action, but not getting where you want to go, right? Or you don't know where you want to go. You're not taking the action, you're not getting where you want to go. Like... Either way, you, you're kind of screwed. Yeah. It's kind of simple when you pull it down to that. Yeah. It, it, it is on a, on a conscious level, but it's these unconscious blocks that are, hmm. like, they get in the way. You know, they stop us from really, yeah, being present to life and going out there. And What are some of the um, frequently occurring blocks that you see in your clients? Oh, God. It's interesting because... There's always a very similar context, but the content is different. Yeah. Um, you know, I had conversations with a couple of people today, you know, like just not valuing themselves, you know, like one woman was actually a coach, kind of reached out for some help and, you know, she told me about who she is and I said, I totally believe you. And she's like, what? And I said, well, I totally believe you because that also leads to why you're actually not getting what you want in life because you're too willing to give it to others and not give it to yourself. So that's something I see often is that there's mm. a type of a person that's got like a beautiful, big, you know, servant's heart, which is fantastic. And they, they go, go out in the world and make a massive impact by serving others. But the person they need to most serve is themselves. And through serving others, they're avoiding serving who they need to serve, to serve most. And, you know, a lot of people might contest that. But look at it this way, that if you have a jug of water and you don't keep filling that jug of water up, eventually you're going out there and filling other people's cups up, you'll run out. Yeah. So you need to be filling your own cup up first, but you know that will allow you to have even more to flow onto others. You know, I typically say that with a lot of clients of ours that are parents in business, specifically mothers. You know, that they've been brought up, they've, they've you know given a lot to their kids, a lot to their partner. They're now getting back into their own business, and they're just not receiving or not allowing themselves to receive what's being given because they're used to being the givers. Yes. Um, in that situation, I think. Um, you know, procrastination is one that often gets spoken about in the coaching space, but I actually don't believe in procrastination. I think that people procrastinate because what they're going after is not a goal of their own. They're going after a goal that society told them they should have, whether yeah. it be a financial goal, a materialistic goal, or a, I'll, I'll be happy when I get their goal. Well, there's life scripts. Yeah, yeah, 100% life scripts. And I think that when someone is truly aligned and inspired by what they, they want to create, they don't procrastinate. Like, they jump out of bed... 4 a.m. in the morning, ready to nail the day, you know? So it's just having that bit of alignment. Um, God, there's just so many. You know, a lot of stuff, um, oh, this is a big one. So one thing I've been playing around with lately is, in, in NLP, we call it rapport. In normal language, you might call it integrity. Mm. Is that I've noticed often when there's a lack of integrity within somebody, that shows up massively in their business and life. So if they haven't followed through on a commitment, if there's a conversation that's unsaid, if they're avoiding something how can they be in the flow of life if there's an aspect of themselves because they're they're unconsciously exuding a lot of energy trying to block or run away or not feel that experience rather than just facing it and approaching it and moving through it mm. and you know I've seen a few clients where we've helped them to kind of get really complete with whatever's going on and uh, move into to, to rapport with that space of integrity things just open up for them and the way that I often say this is that like a lot of people talk about setting goals, right? And think about this. If you go and set a goal for yourself 
let's just say you set a goal of, I want to earn a hundred grand this year, but yet you're someone that doesn't keep your word to others. Mm. How congruently can you keep your word to yourself? Like you can't because you've actually trained yourself that you don't follow through. Yeah. If you are somebody that always follows through on your word, now there's, there's, there's two parts of integrity. There's, there's um, keeping your word and there's honoring your word. Now, unless you're playing a very small game in life, you can't always keep your word, right? You just, you just, it's just impossible because keeping your word is that you're always going to be where you're going to be when you're going to be there. And the fact of the matter is, is appointments run over, traffic happens, things happen. Yep. So we can't always keep our word, but we can honor it. Yep. We can contact people and let them know we can't be there and we can restore integrity that way. Yes. If you're someone who's always showing up in life, um, honoring your word and being true to your word, when you go and set a goal for yourself, unconsciously you've already trained yourself that that goal is going to actualize. But if you're someone that's been playing a game for a long time, not following through on your word, not keeping your word, and you set a goal, you're going to let yourself down the same as you, the same way you've let everybody else down in your life. Yeah. And it's very, very powerful when you get that and you go, holy shit, like I could actually create anything I want in my life. But it all starts with me just following through. Yes. It all starts with me having a sense of discipline and integrity about myself. Hmm. I like that. Hmm. It's, uh, it's a theme that comes through frequently in some of the previous podcasts I've done where people all of a sudden show up a lie start to be demonstrate that integrity with their own word, word and, and their and, and their life and then boom things start to happen mm. they take big steps and off they go mm. well it comes back to that consciously choosing question as well um, you know recently we had a client that started working with us and they'd worked with us for a couple of months and things seemingly went backwards for them in their business right which is always a little bit alerting for us because we know that what we do works and uh you know we'll have it i pulled him in for a conversation they're one of my coaches clients and we had a conversation and basically they were showing out their business they weren't enjoying doing what they were doing and you know they felt that they were making a choice to stay in their business because of the right thing and i said have you thought about bankruptcy now usually people especially a business coach wouldn't advise of that and i was like it's actually a logical option to have oh but what would people think of this this and i was like it's actually not as bad as what you think sure people would be pissed off but what you need to understand is there's multiple options you guys have right now. And, and right now you're only perceiving one option, which is working your business, which is great. But you're actually not choosing that option. That option is out of obligation. Mm. And so we had a discussion of what bankruptcy would actually look like if they went down there. Not for them to, to, to go that way, but for them to have then a conscious choice. Yes. And so I said, I want you guys to go and think about it within 24 hours and come back and let me know. We're going to support you either way. If it's bankruptcy, we're going to support you through that. If it's continuing business, we're going to sort you through that. But either way, you need to, to, to make a choice. They came back and they said, look, really appreciate it. We thought a lot about it. We're going to stay working our business. And within 24 hours of that, they had one of the biggest issues with having a, attracting a phenomenal foreman. They'd lost a lot of staff and things like that. Within 24 mm. hours, one of their best foremen they ever had showed back up and said, hey, I want to come back and work for you guys. Like out of thin air. Yeah. And this is, this is to prove that point around integrity is that they moved back into a space where they were consciously now choosing. They were constantly choosing their business going, okay, well, we could go bankrupt. And what that means, this is and this. Hmm. Um, or we're going to choose to stay. Because what I said to them is, okay, bankruptcy, sure. You're going to lose money, ability to borrow money, integrity with some of your, some of your staff and, and maybe clients. But you need to get your relationship. Because the reality is, is if you guys stay in your business, there's a chance that you guys won't make it as a couple because yeah. you're ripping each other's hair out right now. There's a chance that you're not going to be able to be there for your kids. And when you are, you're not going to be showing up in a way that's actually serving them to grow up into to phenomenal yeah. adults, right? So there's, there's, there's always positive and minuses in everything we experience in life. And, you know, one of my mentors shared with me is that you can't get rich collecting one-sided coins. Yes. Right? You can't get rich collecting like. one-sided coins. And often people go out in life in the pursuit of living a happy, happy life. I just yeah. want to live a happy life. It's fucking impossible. Like I've never met, I've never met a human being that is happy all the time. Yeah, that is sad all the time. Like there's always pluses and minuses. The art is to learn how to balance them and, and equalize them out, realizing that you know the bigger the highs, the bigger the lows. But being able to equalize it before those lows come in. Yes, you know, and I've seen it for years in my own life. It's like you know we go along, have a lot of success, and then bang, the steam train comes to kind of knock me back down to size. Whereas after a period of time, you start to learn that. You know, being successful or living a fulfilling life, you know, is the fact that we've been given a smorgasbord of emotions. Yes. Like we haven't just got one to pick from. We've been yes. given the whole freaking platter. And it's our choice which one we choose. And, and what I see as mastery in life is having the ability to consciously choose what we choose. If we want to choose yeah. being pissed off, 
Realize you're choosing it. Be okay with that. Yes. Don't then beat yourself up that you're yes. pissed off or angry. I've had this again in a few podcasts about being all right with not being all right. Yeah. And actually sitting back and enjoying the human experience and everything that sits within that. Yeah. As opposed to, oh, I'm not in a happy state, so everything's gone to shit. So, oh, life's crap and da 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 da. Whereas, you know, it's today I am happy. Today I am pissed off. Now let's see why I have chosen that. What's the beliefs around myself and the situation that yeah. put me in this place? But also see that as a lesson and be okay with not being okay and yeah. sitting with that. And that's pretty tricky in today's society when we've got freaking mobiles and Facebook and a whole number of other distractions which can, um, you know, distract us mm. from that sitting with ourselves. Mm. So, yeah. Well, I think a big part of that though too, once again, it comes back to the fact of us... Um, you know, having fears or concerns around being judged, mm. you know, and, and ultimately what a lot of that comes down to is feeling like we don't belong, which, which, which is really normal when you actually look at the evolution of human beings and you know, talk about the creature neurology, like this creature neurology or the part of us that sits in the back of the brain is that the one part of the brain that exists in any animal or anything living is that ability for reproduction and fight or flight. Yeah, we we as evolved species just happen to have the right and left cerebral cortex as well that it allows mm. us to think emotionally and logically and have the feeling, but also the detail aspect too. But that part of our brain's got two functions: one is to make sure that we survive, like through reproduction, and one is to make sure that we survive through you know not not dying. Mm. And that comes down to pack mentality, needing to belong. You know, a, a lot of the reasons that that you know you see these stories about people that win the lottery. And within, you know, 18 months, two years, 98% of them are worse off financially than before they won it. Now, everyone I say that to is like, oh, but if I wanted it to be different. And it's like, you believe that, but it actually wouldn't be, right? Because the reality is 2% of people, 2% of people end up wealthier than before they won the lottery. And a lot of it is linked back to this part of the brain that is, that, that is controlling the way that we're showing up. It's like, think about the last time that someone said something to you and you just reacted you weren't, you weren't consciously in control of that reaction because it just came so quickly. That's the way a lot of this fight or flight function is happening for mm. us. And you know, the, the lottery side of things is that we, we've in an environment where our current income level allows us to belong. First, you go and make a million dollars, two million dollars overnight, all of a sudden part of us freaks out, number one, because it's not an experience we've learned to survive. So we first have to learn to survive that experience of a million bucks, right? The second thing is, is well, how is everyone going to perceive me? Everyone thinks that I'm different now. We're going to start to create all these, these false beliefs in our mind. And some yeah. of them may be, may be reality, but a lot of it will be BS around the fact that we no longer fit in with our current circles. Like how many times have, have all the experiences growing up saying you've changed? Mm. It's like, yeah, I'm a human being. We evolve. Shit happens. Like we grow. Yeah. So, you know, coming back to the, the conversation of coaching, it's a matter of upskilling that creature neurology to allow us to have access to surviving the experiences that we actually want to have, yep. which are often not the experiences that we're currently having. Awesome. I like that. I should be thinking about that for a couple of days. <laughs> what can, you know, we talked about having this um, balance between, um, uh, so at the start, between work, life, etc., etc. Yeah. Um, it almost seems like a, um, you know, it's always put out there almost like a holy grail. Yeah. at times um, is it achievable <laughs> yeah look it's a great question um, I, suppose, I suppose I can only share from my experience is that if you look at balance balance doesn't exist the way a lot of us see which is a straight line you know balance if you could see my finger is like an up and a down the difference is, is the ups and the downs are a lot tighter than the way that we experience a lot of life which is quite sporadic yes um, I, you know, we've helped a lot of people remove themselves from their business and set teams up and set their company to operate without them. And the hardest part of that is actually not um, building the teams or getting stuff in place. The hardest part is changing the beliefs and the identity of the business owner to identify themselves as something outside of working in the business. Yes. And you'll often see a lot of sabotages come up. And last year I made the decision. It's like, oh, well, we've helped enough people to do it. I'm going to do it for my own company. And so I hired a, a GM and sort of out creating systems and processes and started stepping back out. Mm. And it was good in the beginning. It was good in the beginning, but then I started to get bored. You know, I started <laughs> to get bored of what I was doing. And then I noticed I started to sabotage things, you know, energetically things which show up in the business that kind of require me to jump back in. And then 
the most phenomenal thing happened a few weeks ago in the States where I realized I'd actually want to be out of my business. I, like, I love my business. And back then I thought I want to be out of my business so I can choose to step back in. But I don't. I just want to be doing more of what I love in my business because when I'm doing that, I'm not working. Like that to me is, is living life. Like I don't ever see myself retiring. Like, you know, I'm lucky enough I get to travel. As I said, I spend a third of my time in Perth, a third in Melbourne and a third uh, overseas. And, and a lot of that is not anything to do with work. You know, I might fit an appointment in here or there, but it's not anything to do with work. It's, it's because that's what I'm choosing to have. And I think Tim Ferriss talks about having mini retirements throughout your whole life. Yeah. And I think that's where, um, you know, people are starting to realize that the real wealth actually is time, not money. Yes. The real wealth is time. And so if you can create a business or create a life that provides enough money for you to have the things that you want to have, but ultimately provides the time so that you can choose to do what you want to do, when you want to do it, with who you want to do it, that to me is, is the wealthiest life you could live and a life of balance. And what that means is that sometimes your business might require more of your time. There might be some times that your wife, she's going through a tough time or your husband requires more of your time. There might be times that your kids require more of your time. And so the balance is having enough sensory awareness that you can look around yourself and go, okay, like where, where am I being called to right now? Is it, is it with myself? Is it my health? Is it my fitness? Is it my own space? Do I need to you know, go for more walks and meditate more? Is it you know, my partner? Is it my business and my kids? Like, and be okay to flow in that state of balance because I feel that where we, a lot of us get caught is, is being too rigid. It's like, okay, I need to earn that 100 grand or a million dollars a year or whatever it is. I need to have you know, four weeks off every quarter. This is this. We get stuck in this, this rigidness. But life's not like that. Like mm. Life is unpredictable. Like Even the weather reporters get it wrong. Yes. Like life is unpredictable. And the more we can learn to be okay with that unpredictability, I think the more we can actually really experience life as life is meant to be experienced rather than as we think that we'd like to experience it. I like that. I like that because there was this, yeah, I really wanted to ask that question because I just feel like it's this mythical holy grail of I get to do all this and I do all this. But as you rightfully say, life shows up and stuff turns up and you know, you're right, your kids require a certain amount of time. All of a sudden your car doesn't work and that needs an amount of time. Or your parents are in town or something like that and it's the time to be able to do that and be present with that part of your life. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm such a believer that everyone should be in their own business. You know, I really am because, you know, if, if one of my kids or my parents or somebody got sick, I want to have the ability that I can drop everything tomorrow yeah. and and be there. Yeah. You know, and I have that in my business. If I need to go and have two months off right now, three months off right now, I, I can do that. Yes. And I still get paid and my business still operates. You know, yeah. and that was looking back eight years ago was, was what I didn't have. I created a business that was essentially I just created a job for myself. Yeah. And the moment very I stepped out of the thing, yeah, very big job, a very stressful job, and the moment I stepped out, it crashed. And I think that, to me, that's the ultimate, is to create a life for yourself. And you might be working for someone, but that's cool. But having an investment strategy in place that you know, you've got passive income or leveraged income coming in from property or shares or whatever the case may be, that if, if life calls you into action for some reason, you can be there. Yeah. And you're not going, shit, well... I can't leave my job because I can't afford to live and, and all the other stuff that we kind of, society's kind of built a system that, that requires us to be slaves. Yes. In, 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 in many ways. Between mortgages and banks, jobs yep. and banks and obviously we become wage slaves. Yeah. You know, and we end up working, like there was an awesome quote I seen a while ago. It's like we ended up, you know, working to earn money to, to, um, working a job we don't want to earn money we don't need to buy things that we don't want to impress people we don't like you know or something like that and it's yeah. like it's so true it's yeah, like very. keeping up keeping up the joneses and that's why i say it's like we buy into other people's goals like a, a book that talks about that a lot is the subtle art of not giving a fuck yeah he talks a lot about society buying into goals that aren't their own and i think like the way that dude thinks is very similar to the way that that, that i think in, in a lot of different different avenues and I think, you know, develop a life where it's actually a life that you want to live for yourself. You're not just living in someone else's shadow yeah. or a perception of what you think it should be. Like, you know, clients come to us because they want to do you know, a million dollars or $10 million, $100 million a year. And often in many cases, once we start working through things, they don't grow their business as big as what they want, but their mm. business provides more than what they need, you know, yes. in, terms of, in terms of profit, in terms of lifestyle, in terms of personal fulfillment because ultimately all we're really looking for in life is a good feeling yes all we buy coffee for or a new car or anything else is a good feeling inside of us 
So what if we can start harboring those good feelings now? That shit's just gonna come. As opposed to trying to chase it, hope we're gonna get there. I've met so many people that have got there and then still don't feel that good feeling because what's really missing is a, is a sense of connection with themselves. Mm. Is that linked to, because um, there was a phrase in the intro about heart-based coaching. Yeah. Can you expand a bit more on that? Yeah, well look, we've done a lot of stuff with, um, originally it was kind of NLP and psychotherapies. We learned in Australia and then I went and found some guys in the States who were kind of there when NLP was first created and, and really learned from the root, the root source. Yeah. But you know, over the last maybe 10 years, I've done a lot of different spiritual developments. And mm. you know, one particular thing that I've been doing, um, heart, you know, open heart meditation is, is really around just accessing and allowing it to, 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 to be with you, like the real you, the real you outside of all the, you know, the misconceptions in your mind and the beliefs and all that other sort of stuff that we kind of buy into. And the way I kind of look at it is that you know, when you look at kids, kids naturally have that innocent wonderment about them. They haven't necessarily got a conscious understanding of life, yet they, they already know the difference between right and wrong and good and bad. Now, whether they choose to listen is another thing, right? Yeah. But, 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 but looking at kids, they just have a knowing about them. And what, I, what I've noticed happening is then, you know, we get older and we start to get educated. We get educated from the brain's perspective. But if you look, when a, when a baby is starting to form in the, in the mother's stomach, the heart is one of the first things that's formed. It's formed before the brain. Mm. And I'm always looking to, to how nature is operating and showing up because I believe that nature is designed perfectly. That I believe that's anything that exists in, in, in perfect is nature. And if you look at that, you look at it gives you all the signs of life and where we kind of fucked up a little bit and gone wrong. And so heart-based leadership is really uh, a combination of, I suppose, a bunch of different spiritual practices that I've done that are, that are not invasive regardless of your religious beliefs or not. Yeah. mixed with the mind stuff and this is where we talk about inner and outer game is really aligning inner game which is allowing people to tap into that intuition I'm sure like yourself and everyone out there before like you've had big things happen in life and you've just known what to do Yeah, logically it's made no sense you've just known what to do in your heart and you've had those times where you've followed that, that in- instinct or the gut instinct and yeah. things have worked out better than you expected but I'm also sure that, that most people and all of you guys have had the experience where you've, you've known what to do but it hasn't made sense. There's no way it could have worked out. So you followed your brain and it went to shit. And so we help people experience those moments daily. We help people to tap back into where they have that connection intuition, like every single moment on every single decision they have to make in life, they can make from that place of a sense of knowing, not based on past experiences. Because when we're, when we're analyzing something, we're forever analyzing it based on past experiences, based on the file structure of, of life that's been so far. But if we're having to make a new decision in life, a decision about something we've never, never done before, how can we possibly consciously know what decision that is to make? And that's yeah. where I kind of believe in, I suppose, a bit of a higher power and tapping back into our heart, that intuition, that's where the heart-based leadership is. Okay, let's clear up all the blockages, all the conscious stuff that's kind of blocking you from feeling what you want to do and who you are and what you're about. And let's tap you back into where you can live life from that space. Yeah. You know, because that's where, that's where the magic happens. That's where the true wealth lies. Mm. I like that. From the heart, yeah. So that's what that means, yeah. No, there's, um, yeah. Certainly, if you look at, you know, I've done a lot of reading about uh, the different energy points and the chakras and the fact that it all starts, you know, heart chakra, at the heart, yeah, yeah. And that we spend most of our life in the first three and being trapped in those, and it's accessing that, and then from there you go further up and then access things that are much, yeah, bigger than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that that intuition. That's why I said before I. I know without a doubt, everyone knows what they want to do in life. Everyone knows what their purpose is. And most people spend their life looking for it, but it's not something you'll, look, you'll find outside of yourself. Yeah. You know, it's only something that when you really truly sit with you and be, be mm. present with all of you. And, you know, what I mean by that is the light and dark aspects, because we all have that. And mm. when we can truly appreciate the, the shitty parts of us as much as we can the good parts of us, that's where that, that real transformation starts to happen as well. Mm. So what does the next three to five years hold in store? For Barry? Uh, look, that's a great question. So one thing I'm really excited about, uh, one of the reasons I first got into coaching is I wanted to find a way that um, we could do the work that we do in schools because I think that if there was work like what we do in the schooling system, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be and my coaches wouldn't be working with as much crap as what we do with the people that show up. And I think that, yeah. that life as a whole, society as a whole would be much better if, if, if kids were transforming, you know, 
those experiences and the beliefs and, and really tapping into who they were at a younger age. And so something I'm really excited about is uh, about a month ago, we launched a program that's, that's moving out into schools throughout Australia uh, called the Little People Empowerment Project, which is pr- pretty awesome. So it's something I've pulled together in collaboration with a lady from the States that uh, I've brought some coaches around to kind of implement and execute that. So that's a big part of the next three to five years is I want to have you know, a basic curriculum in, in every single school in Australia um, starting to transition out to the world. Um, from the business perspective, we want to start to move more into to corporate and share with them um, a methodology we've got called heart-based leadership. We see that a lot of the leadership models are broken and, and people are looking for different ways to be led. You know, we've got more choices now than we've ever had before yeah. at our fingertips. And I think that if we can so access... We yeah. <laughs> I think that if we can access some of the Fortune 500,000 companies and create change within the leadership, you know, top-down, bottom-up approach, I think that the impact that that's going to have on families will be hmm. exponential. And so for me, it's really moving more into the space of that philanthropy, you know, like having a business that's set up to, to provide everything that, that myself and my family needs, but also provides me the time to where I can really find ways to give back. And I think that that's a blessing that, that business owners and entrepreneurs have is that I think they're the real game changers. You know, I think they're the people that can really change things you know more so than what what our governments can be and you know people may disagree with that but that's my honest belief is you know there's a lot of people that i know that are doing massive things out in the world and no one ever knows who they are you know they've got followings of millions of people they're making you know billions of dollars and no one's ever heard of them before you know but they're making change at a, at a massive level more than these people that jump on the telly and the radio and talk about how good they are yeah yeah superb um what sort of habits do you do that keep you success, keep you this focused? Yeah, this is great. I wish I had my phone. And, so, and, and grounded as well. Yeah, so I've, um, I've changed around the whole daily ritual thing for, for a while. Um, I used to meditate regularly every morning and that I, I experimented for a while. I'd meditate and I'd test how long I could meditate for and go to work and notice reduction changes. And the most I got to, I got to a place where I could meditate for three hours in the morning and I go to work and I get more done with the rest of the day than I would the equivalent of three days of not meditating. And so I played around with that. Didn't really believe in the whole morning ritual thing. It's like, no, no, I just meditate and that's it. Recently, I started something new, which I found has worked massively well for me. And it's, it's focusing on four areas of life. And so the first thing that I do is I get up in the morning first thing and I go for a walk or a run or the gym. Whereas before I'd get up and, and sit and meditate, I found that getting up and moving my body has, has conditioned my body to be more responsive and more be able to focus in action when required. Yeah. Um, I then have a green smoothie, so just pretty much all greens because it's just, just good for the digestive system, flushes you out, uh, fuels you for the day. Uh, I then meditate, so I meditate for 15 minutes to half an hour. Um, I'll then journal, which I never used to do, so I'll just journal and reflect on my day prior, what kind of was going on for me, any things that I learned. Um, because I think that there's been times in my life that I've been stuck that if I could have read back to experience in my life, I would have kind of unstuck myself. Yep. Um, I then do my appreciations. And what I mean by that is I think that balance often our partners or our kids uh, sacrifice us when we are busy, you know, mm. business owners or, or workers. And so I make a note uh, you know, every day to, to reach out to, to, to my partner, my intimate partner uh, or, or someone special in my life and share with them something that I really want to acknowledge about them from the day prior. So, you know, something that's genuine from the heart and, and there's been many times that I've done that and, and actually been in tears leaving a voice message, like a voice drop or something. I usually don't do it face to face. I usually send a voice message on my phone or a written yeah. message. Um, my kids as well. So like the other morning I wrote on a sticky note, something I, I appreciate about both of them stuck on yep. the TV. Um, so intimate appreciations uh, and then I'll read. I'll read until I get an epiphany or something that's like really interesting and then I'll share that with somebody else, whether it's my team, whether it's my community. Yeah. And so what I find is there's, there's, there's being, um, so there's body first yeah. and there's being second, there's balance third, and then there's business fourth. Yeah. And so that's the kind of thing. And I've got that down now to a half, to a, to an hour routine is that if I wake up, I can, if I'm short of time, I can smash that in an hour equally to, I can take it out to two hours. Yeah. You do that every day. Yep. So wake up, go for a walk, drink a green smoothie, meditate, journal for a bit, uh, send a nice voice message to someone special to me, send a nice voice message to my kids. Um, Read it, read, read a bit of a book, and then share that knowledge to someone else, and that's my non-negotiables now. Excellent. Yeah, I like the fact that you've actually even got that. Yeah. Let alone the fact that you can detail it. It's. I'm telling you, I've been doing this for like three weeks now, and it's incredibly powerful, like incredibly powerful. Like 
my relationships have changed as a result of it. Um, my thinking and my cognitive processes have changed as a result of it. I'm because I've been tracking my days. I've got this app called the Way of Life app. Right. And so I have these eight key points on there that I've got to tick off every day that I've done them. But then I also track like, you know, how how happy, sad, whatever I felt for the day. And I've noticed that, that generally my mood has been more consistent and more upbeat since I've been doing this than before when I was just meditating or going to the gym or doing a whole yeah. bunch of other stuff. So you were nearly there, but not quite. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So mm. try it out. It might work. Who's, um, who's been the biggest influence on you and what have you learned from them? It's hard to say who's been the biggest influence. I've had so many amazing people in my life and I'm, I'm super mm. blessed for that. Um, God, I just reel off some names. So I think one of my first, my first bosses, the guy that told me to amount to anything was a massive influence because mm. that, that you know, took me off on the tangent I'm in right now. Um, my first coach trainer, Sharon Pearson from the Coaching Institute in Melbourne was, was fantastic. Uh, Jack DeLosa, a good friend of mine, runs a program in Sydney Entourage, was a massive part of my life as well um since then michelle masters cole bukite from the states uh charlie valor a, a current mentor of mine has been phenomenal um you know some of my past partners too have taught me the most amazing things in life um jessica green is, is huge she challenged me more than anyone's ever challenged me before mm. in my life and and my kids as well you know like looking at them and seeing how they operate in life and they inspire me to be better mm. inspire me to be more and finally, if you have a one brief message to the listeners that are listening to this, what would that be, summing up what we've been talking about today? Um, what that would be is that each and every one of you guys have got, you, you, you've got a vision, you've got something in your heart, you've got a message in your heart that you're yet to tap into. And you know, I encourage each and every one of you guys to never take no for an answer and never allow yourself to be suppressed by society or by what we've been told we can and can't do. You know, seek for excellence. You know, if you're truly committed, you know, spend every day of your life, you know, transforming yourself and inspiring yourself and finding ways that you can give to others. Because I think that ultimately, the only way for us to get really get what we want is to help others get what they want. And I tell you right now, you know, the greatest fulfillment and joy that I ever have is not the amount of money that I earn or clients that I sign or interviews that I do. It's 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 through generally helping somebody else without wanting anything in return. Mm. Outstanding. Yeah, Barry. Thank you very much for being super open and super honest today. There's um, tons in there for listeners to take out and think about, and I myself will be. So thank you very much for today. Thank you so much for your time. Cheers. 